One common application in physics of this slicing idea is to use the slices to compute the center of mass for something that's a continuous object. And that's what we're going to study here. The center of mass, for those who haven't seen it before, can also be thought of as the balance point. If you imagine some long rod and putting a, a support or a fulcrum in the middle of it, there's going to be one point exactly where if you put that fulcrum there, the rod would be perfectly well balanced. We can then make it more challenging by adding a weight to one end of that rod and maybe a smaller weight to the other one. And if we do that, we'll find that the point we need to balance at will be moved towards the larger mass. Now, how does that work out in terms of calculations rather than intuition? If we have point masses, which is what we just talked about here, having one mass and then another mass, then the center of mass can be calculated using this formula here. This is called x bar. And the bar over top of a value typically means, not universally, but typically means an average or a mean value, if you like. You'll see that used in statistics next year. You'll have x bar or the center of mass or the sort of average mass location here in the case of center of mass calculations. And it equals the sum of the individual masses here. So remember the sum here indicates we're adding up mass sub i. So if we have three masses, we'd have mass one, mass two, mass three, and we'd add those up. So this denominator equals the total mass. The upper side is exactly the same, except each mass is scaled by its location. So we pick some axes and we say, well, where is this mass in X? Where's this other mass in location, uh, in X location? And then we'll add those up. And this calculation will give us the location of the center of mass. And this is often called the first moment or the moment for the uh, center of mass calculations. Let's do a quick example here. We have two people, and I will extend my artistic abilities to their utmost. Uh, a mother and a daughter sit on opposite ends of a three meter long fulcrum. Daughter's a little bit smaller, excellent. The mother has a mass of 60 kilograms, and the daughter weighs 20 kilograms. If we ask where to put a fulcrum, well, it should be somewhere along here, and it should be somewhere towards the mother's side of the uh, slide or the balance beam but we don't know exactly where until we do the calculation. Let's find that out using this uh, moment and total mass calculation. So what we have to do is define our own coordinate system. The most reasonable one would be that x equals zero down here at the mother's end of the, uh, mother's end of the swing or the teeter-totter, and x equals three is where the daughter's mass is located. Now this might seem a little bit weird at first. We'll do the calculation. Because if you look at what we're going to do here, the top part is going to be uh, x for the mother times the mass of the mother. And we'll get x of the mother in our axis scale here is 0, and the mass is 60. And if you think about that for a second, that seems very odd that the mass of the mother is actually going to get cancelled out right away by multiplying by 0. So you'd think, then what does it matter what mass is at this end of the uh, teeter-totter? Well, fortunately, that 60 also appears elsewhere, so this 60 gets wiped out. We also have the other two ingredients for the daughter. This would be the mass of the daughter and the location of the daughter. And this would be the mass of the daughter. I won't write it all out. And then we divide by, here's the key thing, the total mass, 60 plus the 20. So even though the mother's mass is sort of wiped out in the moment calculation, the mother's mass does play a role in the overall value of the center of mass. And when we take a look at the calculations here, we're going to end up with 60 over 80, which is equal to 3 quarters. Okay, what does that mean? 3 quarters of the way along? No, this is an x value. We defined x to be 0 here and 3 where the daughter was located. So not one third along the way, but actually three quarters of a meter from the mother's end of this teeter-totter is where the perfect balance point would be, where the center of mass 
of these two people lying on a, on a massless board would lie in this system. Now those point mass calculations tend to be fairly straightforward. You have a list of points, you plug them in, and you get an answer. However, many problems in physics and chemistry have things spread out in a much more continuous way. There's not just points. Let's take a look at how we could use our moment calculations, our center of mass calculations, with a continuous scenario. All right, so we're going to start off with the metal rod that we had before. So a two meter long metal rod. And that two meter long metal rod has increasing density as we move from left to right. Now, the challenge there would be if it had constant density, well, the balance point would be right in the middle. However, if the density is increasing from left to right, then we're in a bit of a different situation. We expect that there's more mass on the right, and so the center of mass, the balance point, would be actually somewhere a little right of center. And the question is exactly where would that point be? Well, what we can do is convert our earlier problem of point masses to this by imagining, wait for it, slices. We're going to slice up this bar and each slice can be treated like one point mass. Okay, so the center of mass, x bar, is going to equal, let's do the approximation first, sum of xi's times mass i over the sum of the masses. And for our purposes, we can calculate that as the integrals of mass of a slice and the integral of x times the mass of a slice. Okay, so then we have to start talking about our slices and there's no delta x or dx yet here, so we're gonna have to slide that in as part of our slice. But we actually did this before. The slice mass, which is in kilograms, is going to equal the density, which is kilograms per meter, times the width of the slice, width or length, uh, which is in meters, so the units work out perfectly. And so our density was three plus 0.5 x's. Our width of each slice is a very small interval, delta x. And then we can pop this into both of our integral points here and here. So we're gonna have that our center of mass is equal to the integral, start slice to end slice, zero to two, x is equal to zero at the left and goes to uh, two at the other end. Of what? Of three plus, oh, hold on here, be a little bit careful, x times the mass on the top, just the mass on the bottom. That's a key difference, easy to get tripped up. All right, and then at the end there's a delta x that converts to a dx. So this is x times this whole thing here, delta x times the density is the mass of the slice. And then likewise, we have an integral on the bottom, no x here, just the mass of the slice, three plus 0.5 x dx. So that is our conversion from the center of mass formula, which is just add up the masses on the bottom, add up the masses with their location multiplied. We're gonna do that in integral form, top and bottom here, and see what we get. Uh, a reminder from an earlier example that the mass was just seven kilograms. So the more interesting part we have to focus on here is the bottom, so it's all over seven. We have the integral here of 0 0.25, sorry, 0 to 2 of 3 plus 0.5x times x. So it's worth actually expanding that out first. So we'll have 3x plus 0.5x squared. And we'll just carve this up a bit here. dx. And the 7 that came from the mass in the bottom, we can just bring that out front, 1 7 3x squared over 2. Integral of x squared is x cubed. So 0.5x cubed over three, all of that is over the seventh. So we have one seventh multiplying all of that. And we're gonna evaluate that at two and zero. And if we do the calculation with that, we're going to get approximately 
1.047 meters. And as always, if we can, we try to do a little sanity checking on that. Would the center of mass be at x equals 1.047 meters? Well, remember that if this was constant density, the center of mass would be in the middle, the center. But because we have increasing density, but just a little bit as we move from left to right, the center of mass is actually going to be a bit to the right. And in fact, what we find here is that it's going to be roughly five centimeters to the right of the center of the beam itself, the, uh, the geometric center. The center of mass, because there's more weight on the right, will be pushed to the right just a hair in this example.